Welcome to Into the Debts, a new podcast from Rockwell. In this series, we follow the Denmark CLGP team and the CLGP calendar as it moves around the world, and we meet interesting people from the world of sports, science, business, and the arts. Which brings me on to our guest today. <laughs> I'm very happy to uh, welcome Alex Hu. That's, that was very good. I've been practicing. That was very good. I've been good practicing for the morning. pronunciation. Uh, Danish actor, you may recognize him from uh, the series Vikings. Absolutely. Um, and Alex, it's, it's great to have you here, but you almost didn't make it because you uh, had a bit of an <laughs> episode on the uh, Danish CLGP team boat today. Explain yeah. a bit more. Okay, so you say episode, that sounds like I did something I wasn't supposed to, and that's absolutely true. You know, I, I, I was supposed to stay on the boat and, um, you know, I all, almost didn't. <laughs> so let's rewind a little bit. Yeah, so let's do that. You got a call, uh, I don't know, maybe a few weeks ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. With, with an off, a unique offer. Explain kind of a, a, how it came about. A special prize just for me. Yeah. yeah. As a, a very unique offer to come and, um, to be essentially a guest of the sale GP event and, uh, to, um, because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of established, um, not just in Denmark, but in, in the, in the global world. And, uh, it would be a perfect match for me to come learn some more about the sport. And, uh, and also just with my photography, um, hobby mm -hmm. that I have, uh, be able to take some great photos that I'm going to do tomorrow of, of the amazing race. And, uh, you know, you know, combine those two things and create some great content. And, uh, I, I was like, eh, hell yeah, I would love to do that. <laughs> sailing's huge in Denmark. Uh, did yeah. you grow up sailing? Have you, have you done other types of sailing? Actually, not, not, not that much. Okay. My grandpa, my old grandpa, he had a, he had a boat. And I remember uh, very clearly being on that boat and, um, experience, experience, experiencing Experiencing, experiencing. Oh my God! Uh, which is a little bit of beer. <laughs> no, no. Experiencing um, the being on water for the first time, and um, and I I remember I loved it, and it was really there was a strong connection to that. I'm from a small town in uh, the western part of Sealand in Denmark, and uh, I, you know we have a harbor, yeah, but that's about my you know knowledge and. A connection to to the water, so I was completely green hitting the waters today. So you you arrive at the base, uh, you have a quick look around the base, you meet some of the sailors. Yeah, um, you see the boat. First impressions of the boat. It looks like a Ferrari on water, <laughs> and that's kind of also what it felt like being on it, but just times ten. Um. It looks really, really aerodynamic, and that's because it is, fellas. And uh, that's what I've learned. It's, it's like, I saw one of the right when I came. I saw one of the I don't know if you call it wings, but it's carbon fiber, aluminium, and carbon fiber, and it's so sharp apparently that they had to, you know, put on some safety for uh, the edge of it. Because somebody told me just I, I'd been there for like ten minutes, and <laughs> somebody told me, yeah, yeah, a guy yesterday. Uh, you know, destroyed his leg <laughs> on this thing. And I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, okay, cool. Okay. And that's on the boat that I'm going into. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Great. Great. So the entire day today and just seeing the boat and talking to people and, and the team and listening to their very, very serious and professional and focused uh, team talk and team meeting was like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm getting into something now that's a uh, way above my head. Like, and uh, and I'm really excited about it. Also, very scared, but I tried to uh, compress that and throw it away. And uh, you know, it was the friendliest, welcoming people in the world. That team, the Danish team, is amazing. And uh, I felt very um, yeah welcome. And uh, that really helped uh, settle down and not being too scared about getting into the boat, because uh, it is. 
it's a different ride. I cannot. We'll get into it, but um, that was an uh, extraordinary experience. So you, you jump on board the boat. Hmm. Be honest, how how are you feeling? You're a bit nervous. I'm a bit nervous because everybody's telling me, "Oh yeah, oh yeah." <laughs> Oh, you get, oh, this is your first time. You've never said it before. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and then they laugh and leave. And I'm like, what? Everyone was talking about how, uh, how good of a day it was. Yeah. You picked a good day. And that kind of meant, uh, you're in for a treat. So you're on board. You're, you're behind, uh, Nikolai, the driver yeah. of the boat. So, uh, you know, he's the guy on the wheel. Yeah. Uh, Super nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. Calm and collected. Yeah. He was like, he was like uh, super chatty up until we got into the boat. And then he just turned around, looked at me straight in the eye. And he was like, just so you know, when we were sailing and all that, you know, I won't be talking to you. I won't help you because we're in this and we're doing this. And I was like, aye, aye, sir, captain. Yes. Yes, sir. Sir, yes, sir. You know, and and I love that thing. I love that uh, amount of concentration, focus, dedication to your, to your work, to your um to your craft and uh and that's what i strive for um in my craft and i just feed off that energy i feed off that that uh, uh laser i uh, peeper i uh, focus i love that and uh that's what i experienced today on the boat that's maybe the most impressive thing it's just it's just a privilege to be a part of that and experiencing elite people mm. perform at the highest level and um it's it's just a privilege to to be able to um, be a fly on the wall um in that in that circumstance yeah or a fly hanging over the side of the boat in your oh, case oh i'm so happy you mentioned that <laughs> perfect yeah so the experience of being on the f50 was uh, out of this world i still have trouble uh describing it because it's there's nothing similar to it. There's nothing like it. I have not tried anything that was even close, remotely close to it. Because it's so extraordinary. It's so intense. It's extremely scary, and you feel like fish out of water. There we go again. And uh, and because I'm I'm green, I did not know what to do. All I was told was, hey, after the the safety uh, training, obviously, where you know a guy tried to drown me five times. And did not succeed, thank God. But, uh, but, but, you know, being on that boat, all you're told is just follow the captain, you know, follow Nikolai. And he's running fast and he's getting out in and out of that hole in the boat like it's nothing. And it is. It's really something. <laughs> the first time I tried, the first time we had, we had, we had to turn. Uh, very vividly. Uh, I, I was like, okay, yeah, so here we go. You know, just thrown into it. And that was a great part of the experience as well. And I, I saw myself from the outside, even with all, everything going on, the elements going on and all that. And, you know, 50 miles an hour or whatever it was. And, and I saw myself from the outside crawling like a little kid, <laughs> like a little infant <laughs> trying to get to the other side. <laughs> and Nicola was already there. I, I, and you know, five seconds later, I finally arrived. He was like, "Okay, okay, all good." And they just, you know, sailed, sailed, sailed away. And uh, it took a few turns to get that thing going. And then, you know, all it takes is a is a another extreme turn, and you forget everything, and it just knocks you over. I figured I've I've on the eighth turn or something like that. I I finally figured out that. The boat is tipping mm -hmm. when we're turning. Yeah. So we transfer weight from here. We're all on this side. And we run to this side while we're turning or after we're turning. And, of course, that transfers the weight to this side. So when I'm running as the last one, you know, I get all the <laughs> way here. So I, I did not realize because everything is going so fast. I did not realize all the extra momentum that I was getting from all of a sudden running downhill. And, you know, that just made me, you know, not miss the hole, as you say. And, uh, and that was, uh, that was, uh, that was, that was not pretty at all. I was, uh, head first down into the water, uh, head uh, clear up to the sky and 
thank God I was, I was, I was locked in. But, uh, you know, I was, I was lying there <laughs> kind of screaming, kind of uh, fearing from, for my life uh, for two seconds. And then I pulled myself up and I was like, I, I, I slapped him on the shoulder and was like, hey, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. And then I tapped the, <laughs> the helmet as I was taught by the, <laughs> by the, uh, is, uh, uh, security trainer. But that's only when you're in water. So I was like, yeah, 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 guys, I'm here. I'm here. We're good. We're good. <laughs> Whatever. I panicked. But, uh, but it was quite the experience. I guess if there's any uh, machines that you want to be hanging off the side of, this is a pretty cool one. You know, it's a boat that can hit 100 kilometers an hour powered only by the wind. It's it goes two, three times, you know, um, faster than the wind. It's uh, And the sa- what's really cool when you're on board is the sounds, right? Yeah, it's funny. It's crazy because you don't really hear that because you're wearing the headphones mm-hmm. and the the mic and all that. But but you can you can sense it. It's a very um it's a very audio visual experience. Really, really is. Uh, all of the elements uh, on top of that uh, is just because you're wet. You're like you're 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 getting so much water on you and and. Uh, everything is hurting a little bit because it's soft edges and and you know I f- fell on my butt a, a thousand times doing that doing that where was that forty five minutes I was out an hour mm-hmm. or so and it was yeah it's it's just a, such a surreal experience because there's only like I was told two hundred maybe people mm-hmm. in the world that has ever tried that so like I I feel very privileged I just have to say that. Yeah, I think we worked out uh, last week that as many people have been to the moon yeah. as have driven an F-50. Are you kidding me? So the guy on the <laughs> wheel is extremely privileged. Um, well, okay, that's a, a huge step for mankind. But, I mean, we can me. geek out We can geek out on the F-50 all, all day, but yeah. I want to hear a bit more about you as well. Before we chat more to Alex, be sure to check out the other episodes in this series, including Alex Bellini. Italian adventurer, explorer and sustainability campaigner as we follow his 10 rivers, one ocean campaign. Also, don't miss our interview with big wave surfer and Red Bull athlete Andrew Cotton, who reveals his fight to return from a devastating back injury sustained at the home of big wave surfing, Nazare. To watch, head to our Beneath the Surface YouTube channel or to listen, you can head to Apple Podcasts or Spotify. In the meantime, let's rejoin our conversation with Alex following his experience on the F-50 CellGP boat. It's very physical on the F-50. You talked about, you know, if you've never been on there before, you have to retrain your, your brain and your body a, a little bit to fight the gravity. You know, a lot of people will recognize you from Vikings. Mm-hmm. And I read that you had quite a stringent uh, fitness program for that. So tell us a bit more about the kind of, the kind of fitness programs that, that you would, that you would go through for something like Vikings. So for, for people who has not seen the, um, the TV show, my character, uh, Arvid the Boneless is crippled and suffers from something called brittle bone disease or osteogenesis imperfecta in Latin. And, and that made me crawl every single day at work. Or when I finally got up and got what, I called essentially the forest gum uh, they weighed around 25 kilograms. Wow. So, so, you know, every single day at work was, uh, n- not a walk in the park and, uh, um, just like being on the F 50, that's not a walk in the park either. Wow. But I had to compensate because every single day at work was uh, chest day, shoulders, arms. I was giving leg day like a crazy. And I shouldn't actually, when I did all the physical stuff and, and was training for that. And-